So I'm allowing just a brief period of overlap, not too much. And it's what pianists often refer to as uh, finger legato. When they play one note, they wait until they played the next one before lifting the previous. Let's talk a little bit about legato fingering. And this is again at the heart of this lesson. So although we're talking about specific passages here, my hope is that you can carry this over to other pieces in your repertoire. So as much as possible, I'll try to give you reasons of why I do one fingering over another. Let's start with something quite simple. If we have two notes and we want to make them legato, then what is the key element? I'd say it's the connection. In fact, legato means, just means connected. So if we have note A, note B, or let's maybe use B and E as an example, then our goal is to minimize any kind of gap in between. So if we're playing on one string, like this, our goal is simply to make sure that our hands are well synchronized, that our right hand isn't anticipating too much as to cut the notes, like this. In other lessons, I may have talked about how preparing is a key part of having a consistent and clean sound, but you want to minimize that preparation as much as possible so that it's imperceptible. Okay, so that's when we have both notes on one string. Now what happens when we have notes on different strings, like this? Something different comes into question. We have two different timbres. Playing two notes on one string is easy in terms of maintaining a consistent tone. But across two strings, we'll notice that in this case, the third string sounds a little bit warmer, a little bit uh, fuller perhaps than the second string. So our ear is able to perceive uh, the difference quite easily. So if we have our first note D and our first note E, however well connected they are, we'll still perceive them slightly as different elements. Now there's a little trick we can do and which pianists have been doing for centuries in fact, and it's just allow a little bit of an overlap so that there's this brief moment where both notes are ringing together and our ear can more easily um, kind of glue them together and perceive them as, as part of one thing. Something like this. So I'm allowing just a brief period of overlap, not too much, just a brief moment. And it's what pianists often refer to as uh, finger legato. When they play one note, they wait until they've played the next one before lifting the previous. And this allows for a really beautiful uh, legato playing. So we have these two ways of playing legato. When it's on one string, make sure that the gap is as tiny as possible between both notes. And when we have notes across two strings, we in fact try to make them overlap. Now, there's another little trick that we can, that we can use, and that's portamentos. And it's just a device to imitate uh, how we would usually sing between two intervals, especially when we have a large leap. And usually what happens with portamentos is that if you have a big distance, you just try to fill it in quite subtly. So something like this. So technically you'll see it's achieved by dragging the same finger up or down a string. And there are ways of doing this. If we press too strongly as we shift, like this, we won't get a very elegant portamento. On the other hand, if we press too lightly when we shift, we'll barely hear it. So something in between can achieve our goal of connecting these two notes. Or something like that. You can experiment with different degrees of pressure. Just to be even more specific and clear, this has to do with pressing down on one note, then releasing lightly, but not too much, shifting, and then pressing down a little bit more to make sure that the, the final note sounds nice and clean. Okay, so we have these, these different elements. How do we apply it to our piece? Okay, so let's start with the first few notes. Let's 
look at them in an objective way first. So what I did here was to play the A and the D for exactly their length without any overlapping. And then just slide up without any portamento. What happens if we now apply what we learned? So two notes across strings, we let them overlap a little bit. So A needs to overlap a little bit with the D, which isn't too hard anyways, because we have the A harmonics ringing on. And then we can do a little portamento from the E to the F sharp. So small, simple decisions, but which applied um, together actually produce a very nice effect. So that already sounds a little bit more legato. Okay, now one more element that I think can help is uh, vibrato to actually give us the illusion of more sustain. So something like this, I'll give you an example of a flat note. 